gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. Today we are going to talk about Oregon grape and with me today is my special guest and friend Jessica from the Four Seasons Herbal Guild and we're going to do the first ever native plant showcase on Oregon grape. All right, so this particular shrub is called Mahonia aquifolium. The genus is Mahonia currently. I'll get back to that in a second. There's several different species of these plants. There's aquifolium, there's repens, mm -hmm. there's nervosa. nervosa, and there's a few others as well. They're all native to the Western United States, and they're in the family Berberidaceae. Okay, now the genus Mahonia, it used to be Berberis back in the day, and I don't know when it changed to Mahonia, but now I'm just hearing rumors that they might change it back. Hmm. So let's just add to the confusion, right? So it might go back into the Berberis genus, but for right now, it's Mahonia. The plant has extremely pokey leaves. Like these things are mean, they're gnarly. They have sharp spines on the end in the margins. The leaves are pinnately compound, with opposite orientation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are actually leaflets, yeah. and the whole big thing is a leaf. And again, spiky, mean margins. This is not a great plant for the landscape usually, because they tend to get very large. They also drop these pokey leaves, and when you have to clean them up in the fall or the spring, it's like picking up handfuls of needles. I can't, it, it'll go right through your gloves. You can't even, use a rake in your hand to pick these up. It's like a two rake job, okay? Because of that, and also because the roots can have rhizomous roots that spread, I've got a couple of little babies coming up in my lawn. Oh, yeah, I see that here. Yeah, hmm. not thrilled about that. <laughs> but you know, that's just life with this plant. This one came with my house. I wouldn't have chosen this, but at the same time, I get some pretty good berries out of it. So, you know, it's, it lives here, it stays. All right, so underneath the bark Ooh. is yellow. Now the yellow bit you said is full of? Berberine. Berberine, okay, so that is a compound that is, has medicinal qualities? Yes, yes, folks. Folks use it in all kinds of ways, berberine. I also find it in golden seal and a number of, of other uh, yellow species in the bear bear family. Typically it's associated with detox of the liver, helping the liver work better, secrete more and, and better juices to move toxins along. General cooling herb. And the roots are full of this. Yes. The roots are yellow all the way through. They are. Some other things to know about this plant in particular. If you're trying to get rid of it, I'm just gonna say good luck. Okay. I mean, I've gotten rid of worse, but those roots go straight down several feet. I mean, like this one probably is at least as far down as this thing is high. So we're probably looking at five to six foot down roots. Have about so below. They're woody. So at least they don't break. Like, you but know. But you're kind of fighting nature. Yeah. Yeah. They want to be here in this particular yeah. climate. And, and this is a good plant to have around because it is a native and it supports a lot of really cool native species. And it, my honeybees love it too. They're not native, but mm. you know, they do love it. How to care for this plant? You really don't do anything. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I like that. Okay, because it's a native, it doesn't need fertilizer. It doesn't really need a lot of water unless you want a lot of juicy berries. Really all you need to do to it is pruning if it gets too big. And, or if you want a certain shape or something. So I already have a video on pruning this particular shrub because it was getting way too big. So I will link that video up here if you want to watch how to prune this plant, click on that. But what I want to add to that video is it didn't bloom the following spring and so I learned a thing. These bloom on the previous year's wood. Okay. Oh. You see how the berries are actually set back this is this year's growth, and next year it's going to bloom out here. And so if you do a whole bunch of hard pruning on this, you're, you're going to lose your flowers and you're going to lose your berries for the next year. Oh. If that's not important for you, then go for it. If that is a thing that's of importance, then what I would recommend is that you only prune a third to a half of the branches at a time so that you leave some of this new growth for next year's flowers and berries. Ah, a third okay. to a half. A third to a half. And so then you do that basically every year until it's done. But the flowers in the spring 
attracts so many honeybees. I just, they're swarming with honeybees. And this was even before I got my own hive. My bees went nuts over this, obviously, but so do everybody else's. And you can see the result. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Made some amazing berries. Mm, yep. Good stuff. Yep. Oh, good stuff. That's unmistakable. <laughs> Would you give this to most people as their first native food? No. No, not this <laughs> one. I mean, I do all the time, I suppose. Because I'm like, hey, you can eat these. Try one. <laughs> all kinds of tribal people ate these berries back in the day, and their palate was a lot different than ours. But these beautifully ripe blue kind of covered with a, a dust like plums are a little fungus are sour and acidic they are full of antioxidants and there's lots of tannins they're stringent they're making us salivate right now yeah mm. oh it is hydrating i have had dry mouth since this happened and this is the best my mouth has felt all year oh my god ah, and that's the bitter Give compounds working for us so these berries they, they are kind of tedious to harvest there's a, a method to it, and you gotta get around these, these leaves covered in these spikes. But they make an excellent jelly. They make an excellent syrup. You can combine them with regular grapes and make a, a juice that way. So they have the benefit of being good for you, um, cleaning up free radicals in the body, and they're also um, delicious. If you add enough sugar for most of our palates, <laughs> it's a lot of sugar. Or yeah. honey. Can or you honey. Use honey? Mm -hmm. Or maple syrup. Oh yeah. I like maple syrup. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so when is the right time to harvest these berries? That's such a good question. So right now it is um, the very beginning of fall. It's September 27th. Yeah, yeah. end of September, early October. And these berries live in a watered yard. The berries that live in the wild probably by now are mostly shriveled up and, and past the point of wanting to pick them. Yeah, because some of these are pretty gross looking. Yeah, they get pretty shrivelly, sort of like a raisin. Are they still edible when they're raisins? They're still edible like that, um, you know, but the, the juices are nice when they're fresh. Yeah. I haven't ever tried them. And then if they sit too long, they can get the black molds and all kinds of other stuff going I've seen. Yeah, all kinds of fun. But you could also put them in the freezer. Yeah, you could definitely freeze them and, and use them later on. You can, uh, you you can that, boil them in a tea, take them out of the freezer and throw them in, in some boiling water and drink that for a, a nice acidic tannic punch. If you had a, um, a sore throat, that would be a really excellent thing to drink. So another interesting point, which is that you can use um, the juice of these berries for dye. Yummy. Delicious. And you can actually use a decoction of the roots and inner bark as a dye too, with a really lovely yellow. And that the Native Americans have used it for that many, for many centuries, I imagine. Okay, so how do we harvest these berries if we're going to use them? Mm, that's a very good question. <laughs> that is. Okay, so here I have my harvesting <clears throat> apron with me, Amy. Okay. And I'm going to go up here and um, there might be a more efficient way to do this, folks, but for right now, um, one way that works well is I'm going to reach grab up. The cluster. Yep, just grab the cluster and they just, like four of them, five of them broke off right there. kind of push it in the opposite way and they snap right off. So thanks for watching that video. I hope you liked it. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already done that. And if you have a question, feel free to leave a comment down below. Mm. I'd love to answer them. Mm. Okay. And thank you so much, Jessica, for helping me with this video and you sharing bet. your knowledge. Um, and if they want to know more about the Four Seasons Herbal Guild. Yeah, check out fourseasonsguild.com. Okay, and I'll link there. that in the description below as well. And are there recipes and stuff on your site? So There are can... some recipes, yep, yep. And there's lots of places to ask us questions. Excellent. So you could find out things to do with your Oregon grape berries using that resource. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's it for today. So on that note, guys, thanks again for watching. We'll see you see in the, the garden. garden.